dependent variable and two or more independent variables. So typically uh, if I assume y is my dependent variable and x1 and x2 are two independent variables. So when I am trying to build a relation like y equal to b0 plus b1 times x1 plus b2 times x2 plus so on bn times xn plus some error component epsilon. This kind of a relationship that we are trying to build between the independent variables and the dependent variable is called as the multiple regression kind of a relation. And typically in this uh, multiple uh, regression, it is an extension to the single uh, simple regression kind of a mechanism where we had only one independent variable to be considered. So, the same thing I would like to take up a small uh, example and based on that uh, data set, we will uh, try to uh, see how that uh, multiple regression can be applied. Just like the way we have discussed in case of simple regression, the intention of deriving these values B0, B1, B2 which are the coefficients of the various variables x1, x2 and so on is with an intention of mitigating this error. So if I assume that this is the actual variable, actual value and this is my predicted value, the difference between the actual and the predicted the difference between the actual and the predicted the square of it which is what is nothing but the error square this has to be minimum uh, and whatever uh, the choice of or combinations of b0 b1 b2 are chosen from this perspective of minimizing this uh, error is what uh, uh, goes as the best bidding multiple regression uh, model. So the way we execute it is more or less uh, similar to that of uh, a simple uh, linear regression kind of a model itself. Uh, a specific uh, tools uh, can also generate, specific tools like Excel can also generate uh, the multiple uh, regression uh, analysis. So the first thing is let me try to take one data set and based on that data set I would like to work out or interpret the various items that are coming out of the multiple regression model. So let me uh, take a data set. Yeah, this is the data. So this is the data set where I am having three specific uh, variables for uh, the various pharmaceutical uh, companies. The profits as of today for this quarter, the revenues of this quarter which is under the sales and the total assets which the company has. Now I would like to know is there any way I can predict the profits of this companies the moment I know what are their sales and what are their assets. In the simple linear regression model we have looked at finding out based on the sales can I predict the profits of the company. But now based on sales and assets two variables I am deciding two of them as independent variable based on the sales as well as assets of each of these companies can I predict the profits? So that kind of a model which we are trying to build is what is a multiple regression model because I am going ahead with two independent uh, inputs or two independent variables in this process. So let me just uh, quickly execute the multiple regression uh, model right and after that we will uh, get into the interpretation aspect of that. So in the regression part. Okay, I'll look at uh, 
the input variable is the profits profits form the input variable y right and whereas uh, the independent uh, variables here i am considering two anything above one we call it as a multiple regression model so i will consider the sales as well as assets two of those variables and when i am uh, trying to do some kind of regression analysis on the top of them these are what are the values that are coming up so i need to have a mechanism to interpret these uh, values right okay let's look at uh, what is the output that this regression model has generated we have gone ahead with 97 data points here that is one thing which uh, we can directly make out we have taken a sample size of 97 to perform this particular uh, analysis and logically looking at this is what is our model so if i have to write this particular model this is nothing but minus 43.098 right if at all i have to write the regression formula for this particular model then profit profit is equal to minus 43.098 plus 0.14616 times sales minus 0.0064 times the assets this is what is the formula that has come out if at all i have to predict the profit for based on this regression equation it is working out to be this particular number and so what are the various uh, terms that we can interpret here the intercept what is the way we can define the intercept minus 43 if at all my independent variables are zero for a company which has generated zero sales and which has zero assets i can very well say their profit would be a minus 43 uh, minus 43 units which means they are going to generate a loss if the sales is not existing and the assets are uh, zero for that particular company it is going to generate uh, a profit of minus 43 units which means it is going to generate a loss that is how we interpret the intercept and uh, let's say when i am looking at these two coefficients which are typically b1 and b2 i call them as the partial slope coefficients in a simple in a simple linear regression model we used to call them as slope coefficient only but in a multiple regression model we call them as partial slope coefficients the reason being this value represents what is the increase in profit if the sales increase by One dollar sales increase by one dollar. The profit will increase by point one four dollars, provided there is no change in the assets. So keeping all other variables constant, if the sales change by one dollar, the profit will change by point one four dollar. that is what is the inter interpretation of the partial slope coefficient so in this case also it means that if at all nothing else is changing if the assets of the company increase by 1 dollar probably uh, the profit of that company is decreasing by 0.0064 dollar that is what is the negative sign indicating to us so that is how we interpret the regre multiple regression uh, equation so now 
now that these two values are generated right now that the coefficient and the partial slope coefficients are existing for us my next objective is to test each of them for the significance so i have to test each slope coefficient for the significance hypothesis testing i have to do on each of the slope coefficient now for that just like in a simple regression uh, process my null hypothesis will go as the variables b1 b2 etc are all zeros whereas my alternate coefficient says no they are not zeros b1 not equal to 0 b2 not equal to 0 and so on so the multiple uh, coefficient each of the coefficients it is not equal to 0 which means it is significantly different from 0 so the way we are going to work out again is i compute the t statistic value for each one of them which the way t statistic is computed is nothing but the coefficient the coefficient minus hypothesized value because here we are looking at hypothesized values of zero only coefficient divided by standard error standard error for each of the each of the coefficients is already computed by the uh, computed by the regression process so coefficient divided by the standard error gives me the t statistic so i could have easily taken coefficient divided by the standard error giving me the t statistic so this is what uh, the the table is also displaying to us minus 2.06 8.43 and minus 0.50 so these are the way the t values are typically uh, computed for us now our intention is compute the compare the t value with the critical value and how do i uh, look at the critical uh, value corresponding to this i can easily take the from the t distribution table for a 5 5% 5 level of significance and 96 degrees of freedom one less than the one less than the sample size 96 degrees of freedom the the critical value comes out to 1.984 so as long as my computed p value lies between Minus 1.984 to plus 1.984. I do not reject the do not reject the null hypothesis. And what is the null hypothesis for us? That variable is equal to zero. Whereas uh, if at all I find my calculated value less than minus 1.984 or even greater than 1.984, I can reject. the null hypothesis and i can very well go with the alternate hypothesis now here in this case we can see that this is outside the interval this is outside the interval whereas this one is not outside the interval only for the sales the t value is outside the interval and for the intercept the t value is outside the interval whereas for assets the t value is not outside is within the minus 1.98 to plus 1.98 interval so i can very well say that the sales the coefficient of sales is statistically significant but i don't have the evidence to say that the coefficient of the